Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, it's the awesome cast 211 Mike Sork here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, ready to get geeky and get technical with you with no apologies. I apologized last week for the, my technicalness, um, and we're not going to apologize this week. That's the new credo on here, Chilla. Oh, sweet. As Chilla joins me, we're, we're getting deep in the tech. Deep in the tech, no excuses. Down in the weeds. Let us know. Just if it's something you don't understand, just skip to the next thing and, and or absorb it, and and you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Everybody's okay. We can hold hands together, and everything will be just fine. Um, or if you have a question, or if you have a question, and want to want us to go deeper, we will or elaborate. explain. We'll take the deep dive. We don't care. Yeah, it's all good. We're Send not us afraid. an email. We are not afraid of the deep dive around here. Hit us up in the chat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you can join us in that chat at live.sorgatronmedia.com every Tuesday. Oh, what's going on there? I think my, I think my thing's going weird. Uh, I think I'm back. There we go. Every Tuesday around uh, 6.30 or 7 p.m. Eastern. Oh, just put that range in there because let's be <laughs> honest. Um, you can join us or at least see our pre-show and some of our discussions. Like we were discussing video game capture cards, for instance, for a little bit there. Uh, and you can get in on that. Uh, you can also uh, uh, check us out. We're uh, uh, at awesomecast.com. Check us out on Twitter, uh, at awesomecast, Facebook, Google+. Plus. You can find the show on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, uh, so you can listen to us or watch us any way you can. You can Chromecast us like Doug Durda does, uh, He's he, as he's shown us in the past via the YouTube app on his phone, uh, and, and shoot us to the big screen. That's kind of cool, you know. I've watched his show on the uh, on the big screen. It's kind of fun to watch your friends up there, you know. I know you've watched his show on the big oh, screen I've watched it on before. the big screen. And, you know, I actually, I actually paid to download the Justin TV app back in the day oh no and it worked for a while and then it stopped working and not i mean not just justin tv in general like, now, <laughs> now now it really happens. doesn't work yeah yeah but uh yeah <laughs> awesome uh so uh with that let's get and also you can drop a line at awesomecast at sorgatron and uh, like i said a lot of people join us in the chat intern mice with us chachi wheels brother sorg hopefully he gives us an answer on that oh he actually does have a, a, a an answer for you for the uh, Gamecaster. So maybe we'll touch on that a little bit later. Um, anyways, let's get into the uh, into the awesome things of the week. Um, I'll go first. You go first, because I, I, uh, I have interesting questions and comments. Oh, and... you're getting your, your thing answered here. But I, I want I, I, I'm, I'm paying attention to but that, But I want too. you to check this one out, too, because I think you're going to be interested in this. So Microsoft, uh, this is one of the Microsoft research projects. And, and a while ago on the show, there was, a, there was a great tour done by The Verge and Josh Topolsky over there. Uh, actually, it might have been wherever they were before The Verge. What was it in Gadget or something, right? Um, and uh, they looked at all the research projects, and, and there's actually some really cool stuff to work on over at Microsoft that may or may not see the light of day, right? Now, this is one that, that popped up in, on my video side of things that I'm interested in. Um, I, this this caught my attention. So uh, the headline, well, the headline over at The Verge goes, Microsoft transformed bumpy GoPro videos into smooth works of art. And they go into, like, this could be for a lot of those head-mounted things or even Google Glass. Um, and you see it's a very technical demo type of uh, thing and it talks about like you can time lapse things but it's still bumpy you can try to stabilize and there's different versions of that going on and, and this version here if you're on video is their hyperlapse result and what it's doing is it's pretty cool because they actually get into the the more technical one on their on our research page on Microsoft actually talks about how they're taking away redundant frames like uh, for a couple of these where somebody's you know walking and you actually see in the video here you see them walking and looking around when stuck at a stoplight and then in the hyperlapse you don't see that it it notices that it's all in one place it's redundant uh, uh frames and just removes those so it becomes a one smooth motion right um it, when it, one article kind of says it makes it makes your uh uh 
It makes your head cam shots, GoPro shots, look like a video game, which it kind of does to a point. It looks like you took a whole bunch of Street View pictures, and you're just kind of, you know, just f doing flipbook style with them, right? But and it look, but the quality looks really, really good because you took away all the jerks. You, you you've done a dominant motion. You've taken all the pictures that kind of match up to the next one. Here's another one where somebody looking up and around at a uh, uh, you know as they're climbing a a, a uh, you know, rock wall, uh, mountain here. Um, and it's just crazy. And then you get in the hyperlapse. Each thing here, um, I don't know how much you can notice it here. And some of it's probably because of the clouds going by. Uh, but it looks like, like you ever like see a game in a video game where, where like the scene like renders in the background, you know, like it smooths out as you go. That's what it looks like when it's going through this, you know, and of course, and there was a person moving there. Um, so it gets a little crazy. Uh, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, it's not available yet. Uh, it's using a uh, algorithm. Somebody on the research team has, has come up with, uh, it does say on their page that they, they are working hard for this to become available in a windows app. And this, this is where I think they need to go a little, one step further. Mm -hmm. They need to put this on some website where I can upload my video mm -hmm. and it spits, spits back. The video or are they going to try to put this in a camera and make it a software i can see them doing piece that. that processes after the fact i, I can could... certainly see them do that especially since they have so much mm -hmm. uh, uh you know how how much talk has there been on uh the nokia stuff and how mm -hmm. well, it, well between the nokias and some of the androids and the iphone uh how much they do software to correct on the fly pictures. So instead of just putting a better lens, better sensor in there, they're able to say, well, we'll just, we'll just fix it in post. We, mm -hmm. uh, well, we know we can take this or we'll take three cameras and we'll, we'll smush them all together and maybe take the smiles from each person of, of all of them and mush them together uh, and create a pretty, pretty awesome picture out of it off of something that's not like crazy, you know, hardware for pictures. I hope this sees the light of day. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like usually what Google does. They'll they'll throw it against the wall, see if it sticks, and if it doesn't, they'll take it back down later. I, I feel like what's the harm in just releasing this? Even if it isn't... If they decide they're going to scrap it, release it to the public, and let someone else take it over, mm -hmm. or, or something, don't just scrap it. Because I saw it... They also released something, or someone released information today, and if I knew you were going to cover this, I would have I would have thrown it up there. Um research Microsoft research is also doing something with converting pretty much any camera into a connect nice which could, could be pretty cool but um and they, they showed some some imagery of mainly right now of just hand shots someone's hand moving and fingers and whatnot um I could see that being beneficial even on a front-facing camera on a, mm -hmm. on a on a phone and whatnot, having the camera kind of follow you, zoom in, zoom out, type uh, of thing. And I don't know if you were noticing here. I, I had the video kind of running in the background here. Um, when it gets, let's see when it gets this again. Like it, it gets in this one part where it shows how they're kind of rendering, and and it shows like you're seeing kind of the snake of where the pictures actually are. But this line apparently is determining the actual like motion path of what's happening and that's how it kind of collects the pictures and starts to kind of uh remap the pictures into something a little more usable you know and then you see the mountain one for instance that'd be probably the craziest one as opposed to a straight line if you were doing you know the the the, the street walk one that we we're looking at here a few minutes ago um and you and you see kind of like the, the rendering process going on there as they go and that kind of that, seeing that kind of pre-render kind of shows you why you get that kind of weird rendery effect in the mm -hmm. distance, you know. Well, while not perfect, that's still a pretty impressive yeah. feat, and it, and it can only get better. So. I think I think for what most people would want out of this, I don't think people are going to necessarily use this to create a full fledged movie. No, no, no. This is but I but I think for for the normal ever, everyday average person to be able to to have this to, to fix pictures of family and, and whatever mm. they're doing, sporting events, fun thing, you yeah. know, I mean, this is like having panorama in your iPhone. It's not the best panorama you could possibly do, but it's a pretty damn cool yeah. one. You know, it's pretty nice to be there. I, I was sitting there using it. Uh, I've used actually panorama a couple of times. I used it when we were at the gathering to get the full, like, this is what it's like here, like from, you know, your full view. 
Um, I used it at a big show that, that drew really good over the weekend. And I wanted to get like all the people that were there. So I did a nice panorama from the corner uh, where, where I was set up with my, my editing station um, or live edit station. Uh, just a, you know, it's a small gymnasium, but you still need a panorama to get everybody right. Um, and, and it, and it turned out really nice. Uh, but this, this is, I think that next step to enter video, um, because, and it, you could also see this working in like drone. Mm -hmm. Now drones, we, we talked about maybe about a month ago, the, the drone map where you can go check out the season. We talked about, oh, yeah. we talked about how they, they, they definitely treated the ones from Pittsburgh and they did some post processing on it and they smoothed it out, stabilized it, stuff like that, sped it up wherever necessary. They did the slow, they did the ramp up kind of effect versus like we show, showed a couple other towns where they're just like, no, here's a jerky, weird moving robotic. Yeah. You know, it's a camera on the drone and that's it. That's it. You know, you, you got to do a little bit more mm -hmm. if you want that cool movie effect. This is, this is one of those things you can just plug it into this thing and it'll take care of that. That, you know and i think the drone for the most part will be smooth ish you know as opposed to a rock climbing person you know uh i could definitely see i could definitely see that working on this well even even not even just doing it in post but if they do build it software emulated where or software built where let's just say it's 10 frames behind or even 60 frames behind and it's calculating on the fly the motion mm -hmm. i could see it being used for for a lot of hangouts live hangouts that yeah, could be fun i mean it could it, it could be used in a number of, of ways I, I would love to see this used like i would love to see be able to plug a google glass video into this right just like straight up they do mention mm -hmm. google glass in this video right? so they, because they were talking about the kinds of cameras and they say yes and that includes google glass and Go gopros are probably the most popular version of of these things so, so do we want to open the poll up on uh, how long it'll take for Google to have this just built into everything? <laughs> <laughs> you you, you got to think that like Google's got their own version of something like this. I mean, well, what got, what Google has been doing, like the fact that they they uh, stabilize the you, know, you, you ever upload a video and says, ah, it looks like we could stabilize this for you. Mm -hmm. Cloud computing, man. I mean, a lot of the simple stuff you need, like the stuff that you would typically need iMovie for, uh, although iMovie, I think, is a lot smoother in the process does pump out a better thing but simple things like i need to stabilize this i need to color correct this is being done in the cloud on google servers um and there is a very rudimentary video editor on youtube you can get a lot done in the cloud just like take a bunch of cell phone clips upload those all to youtube and, and but don't post them right mm -hmm. put them unlisted private whatever but now you're using youtube as this bin of footage, just like when I would just import everything in the Final Cut or iMovie, and now you can do everything there, you know, depending on what you're doing. Um, and it's not the smoothest process. It's really kind of herky jerky. Hopefully, you're on a really good connection so it can keep kicking you the updates on the fly. And when it does do it, it really kind of degrades them down because it does a pre-render of everything, yeah, like on the fly. So it's going to give you that lowest res. Uh, because there's, it's rendering there's... and sending you a video at the same time and trying to sync that. So. There's a couple services out there that's like collaborative video editing. Yeah, we video is a big one. I, I've seen them, but they're they're you you need to pay to get anything mm -hmm. significant out of them. Uh, but I'm very interested in something like that. And we've been talking about the audio version of this with Nebulous. Uh, that's a Alpha Lab mm -hmm. company uh, that they had the fortune to talk to at the coffee club. Um, so this is coming. You know, we have this bandwidth, you know, we're already doing this with documents and spreadsheets very effectively. I I often don't see a reason not to use Google Docs until you tell me, well, I need formatting. It's only in Word. Go ahead. Do it. My wife pays for Word, you know, yeah, but I, I think I think more and more, especially now that they're taking in Word documents, I think more and more uh, Google Drive is looking, you know, that cloud idea. You know, I would love a Final Cut cl cloud. I love if they if they had that as an option and I could literally just go to any coffee shop and just edit my video. Don't have to worry about file management and filling all these drobos up, you know, um, that we talked about last week. You know, it, it just just push that on there. Be completely collaborative. You know, I, one of the ideas I've had is can I get like somebody to volunteer, somebody to help out, somebody to intern to edit these podcasts? you know, after the show every week mm -hmm. and, you know, just to have somebody else doing it so I can move on to more, you know, forward motion, motion things. Right. So it's a lot of time, you know, it's, you know, I've streamlined the process, but it's still several hours to do this post-processing. Um, you just quit sleeping. No more sleep. 
no more. <laughs> oh, I tried that. Remember, I stay mm-hmm. up until four or five in the morning and still get up at like eight or nine um, to finish the process. Uh, I've re configured that a little bit uh but it's hard when somebody's like i need a project done i was like oh crap i, I try not to schedule th- things on tuesdays and wednesdays now just so i don't lose my mind mm-hmm. um but i get actually work done around it and, and, and it works out okay uh, but i would love to be able to say okay um these are already uploaded to google drive because i actually just stick them in google drive and then i know they're on my laptop and i just sit there i sit there plug in the chromecast and i'm editing on my laptop and, and setting these up you know, it's the it's the fastest computer I have, so I'm going to use that thing. Mm-hmm. Um, plus, I have so much stuff on the one upstairs; <laughs> it's bogging down so bad. Um, it drives plugged in for the most part; they're running out of room. Um, but, anyways, uh, but no, this is uh, this is this is another one of those cool things that I think is going to kind of push that online cloudy, you know, kind of thing here in the future. So. Awesome. So what do you have, sir, for your awesome thing of the week? Or is it a new one thanks to the chat room conversation? That's no, 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 no. There? I don't have one. I, I'm not switching just yet. Maybe maybe in a week or two once I figure out what I may or may not do mm-hmm. with the video capture. But mine is actually an Xbox One update that's, that's coming out. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to... I think we talked about all the gaming and stuff after E3 a month or two ago. <clears throat> and I was actually on the opposite side of the fence complaining that I bought the Xbox one, not for games, but for all the media capabilities. And they said, you know, we're going back to games. Well, obviously now they're going back to it's a media center because the updates that are coming include, um, uh, finally we're getting a media player. So Mm -hmm. media stored on other computers or devices or USB or whatever around your house. Um, as long as they're DLNA compliant will work. Um, there's going to be an Xbox One digital TV tuner, which they're talking about putting out in Europe first. I'm interested to see how that plays in in the U.S. because it more ha- it has more to do with a coax connection versus HDMI pass through that they have today. Um, the question I have is they're saying that may be required for a new feature, which I'm extremely excited about: stream TV to smart glass. So if you're using the Xbox One for um, TV or cable, even if you're using a TiVo or you're using this new digital TV tuner, which should do over the air broadcasting uh, like antenna, um, you can actually, the Xbox will actually stream to a tablet. And they're, I think they're actually, it sounded like they're targeting everything simultaneously. So iOS, Android. Um, so is this, is this the way you're describing it? It sounds like now that you're talking strictly video, right? Audio video. Audio so video. So it, but but kind of the idea where the Wii will broadcast what's on the Wii to the tablet that comes with it. Yes. But you but just video. But but the, well, here's the, the here's where I think that the, what they're trying to target. Mm-hmm. I want to play Xbox and you want to watch TV. Oh. So I can play Xbox. So it, and on so your kinda, tablet kinda or whatever idea. device, kind of same idea, but they flipped it. They flipped it. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's a big one. I'm I'm ex- extremely but excited it be cool about. If they also push the game. You already have a Bluetooth controller. Yeah, I guess it's you know since you do have a controller, uh, and I can just play my Call of Duty on my iPad, set it up there by the couch. You can watch your Golden Girls, and uh, we're good to go. <laughs> I don't I don't know how well that would work with the video stream because I'm sure it buffers a little bit to make sure that 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 stream is solid. Whereas a game, all those button presses have to be pretty much instantaneous. I guess, isn't PlayStation doing something with that? They're going to put it, they're, they're coming out with that Apple TV looking type device. Oh, the device. PlayStation TV, which I am actually still interested in. It's coming out in October. Yeah. And I think the idea is going to, well, uh, I don't know. I'm up the air. Like, I don't know how much of it's going to be the Gaikai thing. Which I'm very interested. Like I, I'm like kind of wondering, can I get? And we talked about this before. I know uh, uh, here and over on Boss Battle. Um, but can I just get the PlayStation TV? And uh, maybe I can pick up PlayStation Three games on Gaikai or something. Mm-hmm. Um, now the PlayStation Now streaming rental fees have been ridiculous. 
I haven't, like, I haven't paid like much attention they compare to the PlayStation it to side. when you have the N64 controller sitting in a hotel room and you can rent an hour of a game for like 10 bucks. That's pretty expensive. Yeah, that, it's uh, I don't have the rates in front of me, but the PlayStation now ones have been like it was like 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 four bucks for seven days and three bucks for an hour. And then it, it, it you know, exponentially went up from there, of course. Uh, yeah, it's it's, not it. it's no, to it's me. not worth it. No, any of those rates are not worth it. But if you get to a point where that's not too crazy, and all I need is this box, and then I can go get Left Behind or Left for Dead, Left for Dead. No, not Left for Dead. What's the uh, what's the one that Bobby's playing? The one with the, the one where they go to Pittsburgh and they're not zombies in the uh, Left Behind. Last of Us. I thought it was Left 4 Dead. I think it's I thought the Pittsburgh. Oh, Left, Left 4 Dead's the other one. Left 4 Dead's the first person map, I thought. Um, that, uh, you know, they might have a Pittsburgh map in that too. Or. Oh, we're going to confuse. I don't chat know. Room, chat, chat room, chat room, chat room will let us know soon. Um, I, I think it's Last of Us. Anyways, whichever. Or, or, or Uncharted or something like that that I haven't been able to play. But Metal Gear, I, I, you know. Um, that, that's just simply not on an Xbox, but it's last generation. Instead of me going and get a giant PlayStation 3 to stick under my TV, I can just get this box, you know. Um, I know one of the big features of it is the fact that if I have a PlayStation 4, I can play it, like, in another room In another now. room. But there's still a lot of that streaming other games kind of possibility. I, I kind of like that. It's like a, it's a cheaper box. Maybe I can just get a foot in the door and get, get on the Sony side of things. So, uh, and the, the one last thing that, that excited me about the updates, uh, upcoming updates is the boot directly to TV. Mm. So I don't want my Xbox to actually boot to the media menu or like a game, the, the modern UI. Mm-hmm. I want it to go to TV first because I'm the only one in the house that plays the video game side of everything and wants all that extra stuff. And so to be able to, when the Xbox is off and then you turn it on, boot directly to TV is completely important to me. The the other thing that I was actually pretty impressed with is there for the media side of it, the media player, they are supporting a ton of file types. It's not just like, Eh, we're going to support WMA and WMV because it's Microsoft, and we're going to support uh, some some random other formats. I mean, AVI DivX, AVI. I mean, uh, 3GP, which is old um, flip phone, pretty much video, but like MKV, like they're supporting a lot of formats, which is pretty darn impressive. So I'm excited for when this comes out. They, they said it's in the coming months. So I guess we'll have to see what's going on. And hopefully, if, if, if you sign up for preview, hopefully you'll get it ahead of time. Nice. Which I signed up. Because now on the Xbox, there's a checkbox that says, I want to be part of the preview. And you get all your updates. Oh, nice. Or you get capability updates early. Nice. So... So you get you got so the open the public betas have been really popular lately. By the way, uh, no major major problems on my Mac OS uh, Yosemite laptop cool. right here. Uh, I did find after I was pushing a lot of things and doing a lot of the renders last Wednesday of the podcast, I did have a weird lockup issue. I my mean, mouse would move, but I couldn't get off the full screen of my browser. Hmm. And it was kind of like messed up where like the top of Chrome and the and the uh, Apple uh, bar at the top was kind of meshed together and I just couldn't do anything else. So a, a couple of times I had to kind of restart the renders to fix that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've seen not much else kind of stick out uh, as far as instabilities. So and cool. I mean, I'm using Final Cut. I think if anything's going to crash, it's that it does crash, but it was crashing before. You know, if I'm doing something weird in a project it doesn't like, it's going to crash. Damn. Nothing out of the ordinary than I'm used to. So, um, all right. Hey, let's touch base on uh, some friends of the show. You heard about them here at the top of the uh, uh, of the hour. Uh, Slice on Broadway. You can check them out at sliceonbroadway.com if you're visiting the South Hills in Pittsburgh or now in Carnegie. 
as well down there on Main Street in Carnegie, PA. Uh, you probably see the exit as you're uh, uh, heading to the airport or, or into Pittsburgh from the airport or anything like that. Um, but uh, of course, they're also right down the road here in Beachview here in the city itself, right along the tracks or along the T line here. Uh, but go check them out. The best pizza. I was there the other night and we had oh chiller. I was telling you about this. Well, we know about your tactics, how you're, how you're getting, yeah. how you're getting, how you're getting <laughs> pizza for the baby that can't, that can't chew yet. Mm -hmm. um, and it's tasting. <laughs> I'm, I'm still addicted to the, uh, uh, what the slaughterhouse. Slaughterhouse? Slaughterhouse Five. Five. Yes. It's, it's lots we, of meat. Yeah, the, the secret. The secret is um, it's not on the menu unless they put it back. But the Gonzo uh, is it's like feta cheese. And I think they got spinach on it and bacon and, and meats. And it's it's amazing. It doesn't sound great from my description, but it's some of the best stuff. It's actually a sub, but you can get it as a pizza. Supposedly they can turn any of their subs into any a pizza. subs. Um, get that half with the buffalo chicken. A great, great deal. I, they're, hey, they're giving us a uh, pepperoni pizza here every week, but you still want to get down and check out the specialty pizzas uh, as usual. Uh, so go check them out. Follow their Facebook too. Their Facebook is just fun. Um, so there's a lot of personality and there are a lot of cool people down there. So go check them out. Sliceonbroadway.com. So let's get into some of the stories. A uh, little bit of video game news. I, I'm mostly bringing this up because uh, this is technology. This is history, and this is Kickstarter. And what are we talking about? Night Trap. Are you familiar with I've Night Trap? I've never played. Wait, was that the old Sega? Okay, wait, we're, yes. Was that the old Sega? Yes, hold on. Let me play this CD. video, and you'll become familiar with it. It was like uh, bad MPEG video. Oh, yes. We remember it. Now, some people don't know this era. Our younger listeners may not remember this, but CD-ROM FMVs, full motion video games. We thought the movies are going to come to our computers as video games, and we did it this way. Let me see if we can find some clips in here. It's mostly talking heads, I think. Um, but we do have... Oh, they don't have anything. It's just the guys talking about Night Trap. That's unfortunate. Um, but we do have some pictures, maybe? Is this oh, there's a, maybe probably this is one. a play, gameplay one. There actually, it is. Yeah, there, there you go. Is. Uh, so this is funny. This was actually created in 1986. I didn't know this until I read this Kickstarter and they were talking about it. But it was shot for a video-based console that they were working on in the mid-80s that never came to be. And this is actually it looks like it's revamped footage, too. Um, and it became one of the main first titles for the Sega CD, which was an add-on to your Sega Genesis, the 16-bit Sega Genesis in the early 90s. Um, and the whole idea is you go through and it'll play a clip, and I don't know how the gameplay was specifically in this game, but usually pretty horrid. Um, and there's these girls doing a sleepover, and then there's these people breaking in, and you got to keep the girls... See, so they're, they're diffusing blood off of somebody. Um, it's... It looks kooky as hell, uh, but <laughs> it was like half choose your own adventure. Yeah, that's what a lot of these were. That had like a like a, it was all video based. Um, I have I have a couple <clears throat> of these. Uh, I don't have a working Sega CD anymore, but I have like I, I there's actually a copy of Mag, Mad Dog Mag, Mad Dog McCree, which is a light gun game. Actually, mm -hmm. I don't think it was actually light gun when you used it on the Sega CD. <laughs> I think you used the cursor on your on your pad or something. And it was you shoot things, and then a video clip of the person dying or shooting back would play next. Mm -hmm. Like that's that's that was the interactive thing. You would you would find a lot of these laser disc games in the arcade that would do this as well. I think a lot of these that came to the Sega CD were laser disc games, but of course the graphics were 16 bits so they're like 200 colors probably <laughs> um maybe up a little bit because they added on hardware with the sega cd console add-on deal um i actually had um what did i have for the windows I, it was actually a pc game and it was x files Mm -hmm. And David Duke Coveney was in it. It was like twelve CDs. It was like it, it was it was a bunch of CDs, CD ROMs, not DVD. Yeah, you know. Um, and they actually shot it with David Duchovny and and Jillian Anderson. Jillian Anderson, new footage. But but it was funny too because like when when you had to breach it, when you got a game that breached more than one disc, mm -hmm. it would be like once you got like to a certain area in the map and you crossed the street. 
It was like, okay, put in the next disc. Well, if you walk back to the other side of the street, the disc, you had to go back to the other disc. Because we didn't have big hard drives <laughs> back then to drop 650 megs of data from a CD-ROM onto... Yeah, I think I, I think at that hard, point in time, my I, 320, 320 meg, 300... Two gigabyte hard drive, I remember, yeah. in the late 90s, probably when that came out. Yeah, I remember I, I was mad when uh, Quake 2 took, a, took up a quarter of that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but that that's how things were with Phantasmagoria, I remember, was one of them. Uh, that was kind of a horror movie-ish type thing with the full motion video and, and special effects. Um, uh, uh, Toon, oh, what, what's the one? Oh, that one's more of a, that one's, the one with Christopher Lloyd. Um, oh, it's escaping me now. Somebody's going to tell me in the chat room. Uh, we talked about this on Boss Battle, I know, in the past. Um, but just look up full motion video. CDI. CDI was big on this. The 3DO was big on this. I remember the 3DO. They th- look up FMV full motion videos and you'll see the most schlock crap. Uh, ten. <laughs> oh, I just found one. Ten notorious full motion video titles. Uh, but they want to bring it back. It's a part of history. Uh, they're hoping to bring up other ones like Sewer Shark, um, which I think. No, they didn't release that. That's one I had on the Sega CD as well. I think it came with it for a bit, um, which you were in this ship that was flying through the sewer and you shot at things and it was full motion video uh some of these have been released for the iphone uh there was an anime based one that was released for the iphone i think maybe uh, another one tomahawk i think it was tomahawk alley was another one but I, I can't remember if that was released i think like this bunch of them just have not been reformatted for something like that um and of course you can drop something like this 600 megs on a iphone is easy yeah, you know it's already low resolution, and <laughs> so it's going to look a little bit better on that small screen, right? Maybe not on Retina, but you get the idea. But if you want to check it out, they're looking to try to raise three hundred thirty thousand uh, dollars in order to do this. They're going to remaster the footage, put it out. Uh, if you pay twenty dollars and you pick which which level you want, at twenty dollars you can actually get a copy of the game when it comes out. Looks like they're providing copies for PC, Mac, Xbox, and PlayStation. So I don't know which Xbox or PlayStation. I imagine the older ones. We'll see. Yeah, um, why not put it on the new ones and just make sure, it downloadable? Sure. But I think any of them are going to be downloadable copies. I, I think in the long run. Uh, they're not. Yeah, doing, But it's so funny if you look at this game and see that this is one of those games when Congress was going nuts about video games. This scantily, scantily clad girls in this mm-hmm. game, and you're like trying to abduct them and everything. But it's the most laughable thing to try to watch right now. When they're saying that they're also considering creating a sequel. Oh, geez. <laughs> if, if the Kickstarter does well for Night Trap revamped, they'll do a, they may do a sequel. Toonstruck, thank you. Chachi says Toonstruck was the game with Christopher Lloyd. It's one of those click and walk around adventure okay. ones. Uh, Seventh Guest is already on iPhone. Not so much. Well, yeah, it was full motion video. It was. It was um, Mist. Mist had some. Mist wasn't so much full motion video, but it was like a point and click. It was just, and that's also on the iPhone. Uh, I think Mist and its sequels for the most part, are on the iPhone. Um, but that's like the perfect thing for that touch interface, right? Mm-hmm. When you're bored, you know? The, and, the um, Back to the Future ones are great. Oh, yes, I had a, I had a lot of fun with they those. They are. I have those on Steam. Those are those are a blast. Um, but yeah, so so go check that out. Just look up Night, Night Trap Revamped on the Kickstarter. So uh, let's kick over to one of uh, your news items here, sir. So obviously Google doesn't have enough projects to spend money on. No. Because I don't know, they're, they're saying that this project is, wait a minute, let me find it, hundreds of millions of dollars. Let's just run fiber from the United States to Japan under the ocean. Why not? That's one long cable. How do we get our internet to there now? I'm guessing satellite? Like, I thought there were already these fiber... This is going to be, this is, they're calling it faster in all caps. Oh, they're upgrading. <laughs> it's a $300 million fiber optic cable that's going to run between Japan and the U.S. Um, but uh, It's all about speeding up data transfers between Asia and the Americas. The cable could offer 60 terabits per second of bandwidth between the two regions. But we're talking about, like, everybody's using that. Yeah. You know, that's that's how we're linking. Um, I can't imagine we're using satellite for 
when you're down i'm sorry when you're downloading something from like overseas or is that or is that cached here like on a on a content delivery network that's okay okay that's possible because it depends on what you're doing yeah like here would be the question is try to have and i've heard horror stories of people trying to video conference with people overseas we've had people on the show over skype from moscow and it's and it's fine it's fine it's fine and i've seen and i know other shows uh that frequently have people from australia france uh and other countries that you know as long as the local bandwidth is fine yeah. it's fine it's not a problem and latency isn't isn't really all that bad so as, as just as long as they're on a good connection like they're in a hotel probably not going to work but most like home internets in most other countries are kind of way better than what we have okay so then why do we even need to do this why does google <laughs> need to spend the money because <laughs> google wants to um no it probably it probably ups the backbone a bit it's probably just an upgrade to the backbone is my guess 60 terabits is a lot of a lot of speed mm-hmm. but amongst like how many billions of people yeah you know but then again i just look at it as why put that and then two content delivery networks on either side and let the majority of the data replicate mm-hmm. and you don't have to transverse that that network but uh, that's what to me it's it's just a lot it's a long piece of fiber <laughs> that's a lot of glass i wonder if they just like run one like from alaska over or something you know be a lot easier be, yeah you know right damn so that's the, that's the other pipeline we run up there Maybe. But I mean, this is being also backed by China Mobile, China Telecom, Global Transit, KDDI, and Singtel. I don't know. Hmm. Chilla, do you use Foursquare? You know, I did once upon a time, and I kind of lost interest. I lost interest of everybody knowing where you're at? Not necessarily that. It's that there's 8,000 other services that I used that added the Foursquare check-in type deal. Okay. And then I started reading about how Foursquare is going to move the check-in into Swarm. And I was like, this just seems like a lot of work. Isn't it funny? Because like Foursquare was a very rudimentary check-in app to begin with. Right. And I got, I got, again, they got rid of the, the stickers, the badges. Stickers, the mayor's ships are gone. Yeah. it, It lost its fun. But they had to move on, Chilla. They had to move on. Uh, apparently, they're actually having trouble competing with like guys like Foursquare or not Foursquare, um, um, Facebook. Facebook, because Facebook has check-ins now. Although I don't see a lot of people using it, to be honest. But I see, I see it used occasionally. Not, maybe, not maybe near as much circles? as I did when four pe- four Foursquare, Foursquare, Bright Kite, Bright Kite, Bright Kite. Bright kite. I miss mm-hmm. Bright Kite. Uh, Goala. Bring it back. How about Goala? I but, didn't use Goala. I, 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 I tried all of them for a period. Um, but I, I've fine. been using Swarm. I've actually been using Swarm pretty regularly the last few months since they switched over. They just now switched the new Foursquare 8.0 that has all the new features and everything. That has Yelp. Um, that, that what? That has Yelp. <laughs> that 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 is Yelp. Uh, <laughs> but but I like the Swarm app because it's more. It seems like they're it, it, they've been able to kind of swap it up to be a little more social. Like you can see here. Uh, no, you can't see here really. Um, but there's all my friends. There's there's Doug. There's Norm. You know, friends of the show. Some other people. But I like how it's like right here. People point two miles away. Uh, short walk away. People under a mile away. People nearby, but under five miles, and it goes on from there. I, I think I like that spread out. Mm-hmm. You know that I can visually see. Oh man, you know Doug's pretty close. What is he up to? And I actually am up and go, hey man, you want to get some coffee or something? You know, uh, and that seems a little more functional than it was before. You know, because what are the chances people are nearby? Um, uh, are are there still a lot of people using it? Uh, it seems to be like a, well, you know, our our circles are very social yeah. media, you know, centric. So they're going to try things like this typically. Um, so and I. I would say most of the people I remember seeing always check in on, on Foursquare are on Swarm. Because at a certain point, it did say, like, hey, go download this thing. Um, I don't know how much of they're regularly using it. It's nice. I can say I can, I, uh, I can uh, and we we'll probably do this on Foursquare uh, as well. But I can say, like, only let me know anybody checked in if they're in my city. 
Yeah, like there was like a yeah, there was a nearby was and like extended in, like, and... New York City or when they went on the weekend to Erie or something like that. I'm like, I don't care. You know, I good for, you know, OK, great. I get to stalk them when they're going on their vacation, you know, but that doesn't help. The the real reason is like and at a certain part, you know, I do. I have used uh, Foursquare check ins to notice, oh, hey, uh, Uncle Crappy has been checking in this place. Next time I'm over in the neighborhood, it'll pop in my head. It's like, oh, I should check that place out. You know, that has happened. Mm-hmm. And so I think and I think it's one of the main focus there is that discovery, right? I'm um, downloading it. You're downloading it now. Uh, you know, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll, I will do my best to check in at a minimum of See three times like a day See for the next like week, it. and um, I'll report back. You will report back. But you can go in, and uh, it, it does. You, you still get some of the tips and everything. Uh, it, I noticed it, at Chipotle, it popped up a thing. It says you've been here for. Four times as as much as the next people, and it, it, it popped up to like two of my friends have been there one or two times, right? Um, but Foursquare is the biggest change. So, like I said, that's where they put all of their big design change. They put all of the actual place information now. Now I'm wondering. So I I actually do. I haven't checked in with it. Wow, I do manage a venue. Um, in one of my jobs that I haven't checked in for a while. I realize the four square stickers have fallen off the windows. And I should probably see if they got new ones um, for swarm, I guess. Uh, but so, so diving into that, but, but the other idea here is how do you feel about them splitting apps? I'm okay with app splitting. Okay. I, in fact, I'm a firm believer in app splitting mm-hmm. for a handful of different reasons, space on the device. If I don't, if I don't need certain feature functionality and you start to break it out and I don't want it's it, it's not ballooning. It's not ballooning the app. I feel like there's times where, yes, I want to go in. Maybe I want to go into Foursquare and check in. Not that I'm doing this right now, but now I'm thinking about the use case. I may want to go check in at a restaurant, um, but I'm not necessarily interested where everyone's at versus, versus using something like Swarm. Mm-hmm. I'm 100% okay with app splitting as long as when they split the app it makes sense what they split okay uh, do you have any samples of things that have not made sense and they, they actually took away the app after a while facebook camera <laughs> everything that was on facebook camera was available on facebook except for one thing on facebook camera you could create a new album in the beginning So to be able to actually create a new album and add pictures to it, you had to jump over to camera, create the album, but then you could easily just jump back into Facebook and upload your pictures Mm -hmm. into that album. Once they added the create album feature, there was no reason to me for camera. Mm -hmm. Um, But I will say the app, there may be people that are out there that that's all they want to do with Facebook is put pictures, put pictures. Apparently not enough for them to keep it. Plus, I think the Instagram thing kind of right. changed things up for them as well. So, so. Th- at that point in time, that didn't make sense. I'm trying to think of other apps that have split. Um, but it, you know, in the meantime, there's been a lot of discussion. I know there's some other concern over privacy, as usual, with Facebook, uh, with the new Messenger app. Um, if I hear I've that been... story one more time, <laughs> I'm going to scream. So, so let's... To, so when they Facebook split out Messenger and there's this big complaint that now all of a sudden Facebook is monitoring everything that you do, blah, 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 blah. So one of the major features and along the way, we've all agreed to these pieces. So if I want to sync the pictures in my contacts, obviously Facebook needs access to my contacts. Right, right. If I want to be able to grab someone's phone number and call them, or I want to look for friends that are in my address book, they need access to my contacts. I mean, if I want to be able to take a picture and upload it into Messenger from my library, guess what they need access to? My camera and my photo library. (laughs) Like We've all been giving them access all along the way, and I really give credit to both Apple for the way they handle each one gets a prompt, Android, you get the prompt upon installation. The thing that's a little different over there is if you don't on Apple, if I didn't want to give them camera access, but give them content access, I could at least use the app 
Android, it seems to be all or nothing right now. Mm -hmm. But the thing that I really appreciate for Android is if that ser if those terms of service change, the app doesn't automatically update. You have to go in and tap update. Mm -hmm. So everyone's been warned about this from day one. You've all been doing this since day one with the Facebook app. I don't understand what the big issue is here. Right. right. You know, I, I've actually had discussions with some people that just don't want an extra app. They're like, why does this have to be its own thing? Why do I need another app to do it? I was like, well, why don't you just install it? Because you're not going to know, like, install it. Put it away in a folder somewhere. Open your Facebook anytime you want to do Facebook things. And anytime you go to that button that has chat, ch chat it just goes to that app. Pretty yeah. seamlessly to me. Yeah. Um, Google has been. We've been talking about this over the last year. How how my phone is so Googleized right now. I open up a Google browser and I hit Maps in the Google browser and it goes to the Google Maps. Uh, it goes to Google Plus and I start in the Google app for search. Nothing else. And it will go to all those applications and I stay at Google. I don't. Yeah. Like the... like I think. I think it makes sense. Well, and, could, well, and I look at it this way too: is could you imagine if all of that was one app? A, the size of the app. B, mm -hmm. so when they want to update Google Plus and add one feature, now they have to go through all this code mm -hmm. to to add that one feature that's, into and that's Plus. The other thing. And that's what I know. A lot of people don't see that because they're not thinking the code side of it. But but, it's, but it it's... should it should give people capabilities faster yes so they're going to be able to roll out how many years has more facebook capable? just been bloated and slow and mm -hmm. ugly and i and i'm still like there's still like share features that i don't have that don't make sense to why i don't have it there's yeah. share features I, I okay i haven't used my android tablet for about three weeks now and i just finally sent it to rma so who knows when i'll get that back but the facebook was not equal across oh, the no. platforms and it, to a point where i really think the android one's more hampered Yes. It, like the uh, how is the Android one missing more features than the iPhone one? I do not understand that. Um, it was just a mess. But if you start like like sharing that out, I love that Pages is its own app. And mm -hmm. sometimes I like going to Pages, the app, just to check in on stuff more than going to the website. Yeah, see, I rarely go to their website ever. And Very rare. I only I'm... people that don't, and they don't know that they can do half the stuff mm -hmm. you can on Facebook. Yeah, I, I rarely go to the website. I'm just using the apps and it mm -hmm. seems to work well for me. Hey, but... fr from the chat, uh, Doug, uh, his ears were burning because he popped in. Uh, Bright Kite was faux shizzle. I like that you can say I'm going to place and if anybody wants to join and create a social gathering on the swarm app, I believe he's talking about. Yeah, I've been loving that feature. I haven't used it yet. Like I'm considering using that for our next Pizza Pals gathering. But I don't think everybody's on swarm. So how does that work? So you so if you you go on you go on Swarm and say I'm and, going and say, wherever. Okay, say they're a sponsor. Uh, you say I'm hey I'm going to slice on Broadway. Who's with me? Um, I saw a friend of ours. Uh, you know we know from our circles agenda. She was actually saying hey I'm going to go see Guardians. Um, for my birthday this time at Southside Works, and you can say I'm in or questions, and there's a chat and everything like that. You know, yeah, and, and, and I it's like it's that. a really nice. Can you do of, it pretty far in advance? Uh, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, the ones I've seen is, hey, I want to do X tonight. Who's up for oh, doing so it's X more tonight. tonight? Okay, you know, or I I want to do X tomorrow. I don't know. I, I I haven't gotten into that event planning side of it, uh, but I really like that. That's like something that can happen so if i'm i i want to actually test it out and be like on a friday night like, like this friday i have nothing going on and be like hey who wants to go uh the eaton park and just bs and coffee and whatever you know and and see if anybody you know see if anybody jumps in if they don't like oh, you know you're not out there hanging out and your thumbs you know um but i i think that's that's a pretty cool that is pretty nice. cool concept um and and i think that's the promise of foursquare realized because I feel like Foursquare was supposed to be like, like this meetup. But I feel like it was like, meet up. hi, I'm checked in at this coffee shop. Anybody else can see it and drop by. Right. It was more open. And maybe I just checked in because I'm going to go do work, you know, and I don't mm -hmm. really want company, you know. But but I checked in just to try to get my mayorship or my discount or something. You know, there's no context to that. Um, but this actually says, hey, I want to hang out. 
or hey, somebody stopped by. I guess you can also, when you check in, do a message and say, hey, swing by if you're in the area or something like that, too. Um, which I've been doing a little bit, especially when I check in at the coffee shop. Because, um, you know, I kind of want to do... I kind of want to be, that's the reason I'm, I'm getting out of my house, you know, mm-hmm. to do work and wouldn't mind being a little social. So, you know, that, that kind of thing. But, uh, yeah, uh, but, you know, let us know what you think about the app splitting, about the Foursquare, square, uh, if you've jumped back in the swarm. I've been off Foursquare for a while, too, and, and just kind of jumped in on it with this. So, uh, tell me about the new USBs. So, and I'm interested to hear... I, I hope there is a lot of irate people out, out there because after Apple took so much crap for changing their connector and how could they change their connector? They were already different. Why didn't they go just standard micro USB? Wah, wah, wah. And now guess guess who's changing their connector to actually look somewhat like Apple's connector? The USB, whatever they are, USB 3.0, I think it's Type C connector from the USB 3.0 promoter group chairman. What? Um, oh yeah, there's like some consortium that that does the USB stuff. So that, that this was an artist rendering, and there's another. Um, there's some other links on that page i think uh this is just the usb guidelines but what it pretty much comes down to is you're either gonna need a some kind of converter in between piece adapter for your for your new usb cable because guess what the big pro to this usb cable is it's reversible and it sounds like they're gonna try to actually make it the same on both ends hmm um, which I thought was pretty interesting. You know, it, well, you know, I, to a point, I feel like we've already had this a little bit because, I mean, your how many ends of USBs have we had? You know, how many times you're like hey, micro mini? Yeah, yeah, I can't remember which is which half the time. We got I got a micro here. I think it's a micro. Uh, you got the mini, and you know that this has been happening. Now you have that one that's like two of them together yeah. for USB three devices that are like hard drives. Really? Yeah, it looks. Yeah. Oh, I think I think like actually, if you have an external hard drive that's USB actually 3.0, that, um, that box down there, that black magic box, I yeah. think that has that. Because I'm like, what in the world is this thing? You know, yeah. um, I guess it's the first 3.0 device I've ever owned. So, um, yeah, and this will actually be 3.1. Oh, jeez. And it's otherwise going to be known as Super Speed USB. It'll cool. support up to 10 gigabits per second, and this is the inter- it'll deliver up to 100 watts of power. Wow. I think it needs to happen because how many times have you screwed it up? You know, I remember when I, I picked up the Google Glass. I, I don't know if you've seen the cord and plug, but they're black and white. The plug, like mm-hmm. the, the, the wall plug and then the USB going into the wall plug. Um, it, it's white on one side and black on the other. So you don't have to think about which way you're plugging it in. You just match the colors. Like I remember they're showing me that and they're just like, yeah, I don't know why anybody else, no, nobody else is doing this. You know, just, that makes sense. just to help. You know, um, they didn't do it on my Android tablet that I bought a month later. That's for sure. So when the thing, the other thing that I like that, that it looks like they actually might. I'm hoping they do. The thing that I like about the um, lightning connector Mm -hmm. is. It's male into female, whereas. The. The USB micro and mini and whatever, the way that it clips in, it, it kind of has the surround with the circuit board in the center on the on the on the male side, mm-hmm. where you can break that little circuit board that's in there, not mm-hmm. on the cable, but on the inside of the device like- you're plugging it into. Whereas the way Lightning works, it's fully is that enveloped. Is in- that a uh- yeah, I never think about that because it is so small in here, but you do see a little circuit There's a little board circuit in there. board in there. Um, and I've actually, on, on older devices like phones and things like that, I've had the solder break loose over time really? on that circuit board. And then you're sad because you can't charge your phone. <laughs> no, you, 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 can't, you can't do that. You can't sync it. You can't do anything at that point. Yeah, I've had the solder break loose too on older, on old, old hard drive enclosures, but Oof. that were the 
mini, not micro, mini USB. The one that has like the weird looks, I don't know what it even looks like. It's not the small one. It's the bigger one, like the Blackberry one. <laughs> it's the medium <laughs> sized one. Yeah. Yeah. But so I'm hoping I'm hoping they do take that. But it looks like there's going to be some some different mounts and whatnot. But and they don't have a time. They don't they don't say when this is necessarily going to come out. Mm hmm. But it sound, also sounds like they're gonna. It's gonna be the same on both sides for the most part. So not only are you gonna need dongles for, for adapters for your device, you're also gonna need them for the PC side because the cable is going to be identical on both ends. Hmm. From what it looks like. So uh, uh, Amazon Prime same day delivery is expanding. Okay, close In it. Pittsburgh? Not yet. <sighs> not yet. Uh, they've ex ex apparently uh, uh, widened their area in New York City. Uh, have, that's in addition to Los Angeles, Phoenix, San Francisco, and Seattle. Uh, and, of course, they're looking to uh, expand that even more and more. Um, that, that's that's going to be cool. I hope it's first one of them. Do you know anyone who uses it? What? Same day? Same day. Uh, I don't know anybody who uses yeah, same right. day. No. I don't, well, yeah, I don't know... Anybody who lives in the confines of any of those cities right now that, well, I guess our guest last week. We could I know a couple people it. that do. I'm wondering if they use it. I would. I, I, I probably would. Like, what's it like? <laughs> like, do, what's the cutoff? Like, do they have all that stuff documented? I think they do. Um, or do you have to be in that area to see the option to then see the info? Uh, so okay so it's also certain items so it's whatever you know it's whatever they're going to have in stock there locally right so that's going to shift they're like am i going to be lucky to find that camera battery that i can get for this afternoon you know and i'm sure it's like 12 o'clock or 10 o'clock something like that uh and now when they do finally get to this uh the speedy uh, prime if you already have prime which is 99 dollars a year by the way uh you will actually pay 5.99 and it covers all the items in a single order. So it's five ninety nine flat rate for same day, in addition to being a Prime member. Yes. But still, if there's something you want, I would pay that. I want to watch Hackers by this afternoon. I'm out of toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. We were like, oh, we have like two rolls left. And you, you do the math, you're like... Is that going to last two days for the prime to come in? Um, I really don't want to pay that fee. I really don't want to go to the grocery store. I'm kind of busy. Yeah, you, 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 you do the math in your head. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, that, you know toilet paper is going to be in there. Actually, it lists in here what kind of items. I want to try to find that list again. Uh, they say, yeah, don't expect the Amazon to haul a new TV to your door in under 24 hours. And I'm okay <laughs> with that. Uh, everyday household needs, health and beauty, baby items, Toys, movies, and games, electronics, uh, office supplies, sporting goods, apparel, and home accessories. And I'm sure that's going to rotate, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, they're, not everything is going to be available everywhere. It's whatever the stock is locally. Uh, and I'll tell you on the fly, I'm sure. Diapers. There you go. Formula. The, the baby I mean, The baby stuff is, is going to be a huge yeah. thing. Probably. I mean, I, I just see it. I mean, I would, I would use it mm -hmm. and enjoy it. And I, like, like I'm not looking for them to deliver a TV in a day. No, but there are some of those things that you can't go long without, if at all. Now, I didn't know this. I didn't know both eBay and Google have their own version of this. There's eBay now and Google Shopping Express. Now, I'm kind of curious what eBay now and Google Shopping Express um, it's probably another one of those you have to be in a certain area and oh yeah, all these are going to be a certain area because it's, it's all dependent now, on how do, but how do they do how do they do it what's the magic the, the, the like, magic do they have is, their own delivery I, that's truck? what I, yeah what's the carrier do they just have like a crazy deal with like ups or something has to be right but doesn't i thought like so in theory if I sent something UPS to you mm -hmm. and I told the UPS driver to come pick it up from my house or even if I dropped it off. Well, I guess if I dropped it off, let's be Amazon. Let's pretend I'm Amazon and I called UPS and I said, I have a pickup and it's going to, to, to Mike's sort. 
they're going to come to my house and they're, they're going to take it to some kind of distribution center and sort it, mm -hmm. which takes a day in itself. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't so know. It has to be a I don't know delivery. how they're doing this. It has to be this. their own delivery. It has to be. Or they have some service. Uh, yo, for comparison, though, um, the uh, Google Express version, and by the way, we're not available here. Um, yeah, but it says, oh, no's when I put in my zip code. Uh, but that actually delivers same day from retailers. They have listed Guitar Center, Target, I think Walgreens, Toys R Us. So if it's in an area, you can, I want something from Target, you know, they will deliver it out, you know. So they must be doing. So they're cutting deals with something like this. They're cutting deals, but. They have to be the ones doing the delivery, too. They can't be so, calling so the yeah, post they, office so, saying... So they're probably facilitating... I don't know. They have this picture of this truck with a parachute with a package on it, which I kind of wish the parachute was the way they delivered this um, on, on the site. But if you go to uh, google.com slash shopping slash express, you can check it out. Uh, slam, I, don't know, I can't get to the site without... Without the zip code, it doesn't work. So I, I don't know. I don't know. Here, I can browse. Uh, San Francisco looks like the biggest thing. Same day delivery. First, get six months of delivery free is what they're doing. Uh, Costco, Whole Foods, Toys R Us. Yeah, a bunch of those. Now, Google Now, when I look it up, it's actually got an app. And it's available in San Francisco, San Jose, the SF Peninsula, and parts of New York City, Chicago, Chicago, and now Dallas. So you're lucky if you're any of, in any of those. And I can't. Uh, again, that's shop from your nearby retail stores. Pay a small fee, or, fee for uh, store to door delivery. So they are calling this store to door. That can't be a middleman. There cannot be a middleman. Uh, yeah. Uh, relax. Well, our personal shopping valet makes it happen. <gasps> it's it's Task Rabbit. It's it's eBay it's, Task Rabbit. It has to be. Has to be. I'm I'm guessing. I How mean, do I become an eBay Task Rabbit in my in my spare time? Because that that's that's what you need to do. Well, I'm guessing though. Um, you know, you could just task grab at anything you need. Is there enough people that would go pick it up for you? I don't know. I haven't checked Pittsburgh. I, it is available in Pittsburgh now, I think. So, and task grabber for those who don't know, um, it's a service where uh, it just people will be gophers. Like, I need somebody to mow my grass, and somebody somebody can look through the list of tasks and say, "I will mow the grass," and you say, "I want to give you ten bucks to mow, mow my grass," and that connects, mm -hmm. and, and they 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 take care of all that through the service, you know. Um, and it's pretty open ended as far as the tasks, but it's like, I need somebody give me baby formula, uh, you know. Somebody in the South Hills of Pittsburgh will see that and say, "I'll get you baby formula," and you tip them an extra whatever to do it and there you go so a lot, it's really expanding this. this stuff what's that you want this all right on that note chill out we got to get out of here so we can go talk here? some more video games with the ba boss battle guys you can find out about your adapter did you find anything out from the chat room well brother sorg is using a online service not a piece of hardware oh called xsplit gamecaster does 480 without a watermark unless you pay $15 for three months. Okay, that's and not I bad. I mean, the, the video looks good. My issue is is I want to be able to take anything that's you. I, I have two use cases. Here, here's an interesting one. So I need to document computer builds from prior to having the OS on them. So if I can pump it out over HDMI from the from the computer, whether it's Mac or PC, mm -hmm. and be able to video and dock it and take screen captures of the actual OS installation processes, which you can't, I can't remote into a machine that's not yeah, installed yeah. yet. <laughs> so okay, and so you're you doing have, virtual machines. You have a non-video game use case for right. this, right? And but also, I would like to be able to potentially get rid of one of the screens in my office. And run the Xbox through that unit to play on my computer monitor. And I have a Apple Cinema display, so it's not like I have an HDMI in on my computer monitor. Mm -hmm. So those are my two major use cases. I, I want to be able to play video games on my computer monitor. And no, I'm not replacing my computer monitor with a device that has an HDMI in because I want audio and the, whatever. And then also to be able to record any device that can output HDMI. Mm -hmm. There you go. So if you have any ideas, uh, hit up at Shilla on the Twitters. 
or at Awesome Cast, wherever you want to go there. We have a conversation about that, see where we can go with that. And we'll, talk, we'll ask our video game guys, too, if they have any ideas on what they're using uh, while we're at it, getting them on the line for the next show here, actually. Uh, but in the meantime, if you want anything else, uh, it, it, you can check us out, AwesomeCast.com, of course. Uh, you can also drop us a line uh, uh, AwesomeCast at SorgatronMedia.com. You can drop by here every Tuesday night between 6.30 and 7 p.m. We get started for about an hour uh, at live.sorgatronmedia.com in the chat room every Tuesday. Uh, you can hit us up on iTunes, YouTube, Spreaker, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio. Wait, is this one on iHeartRadio? I think this is the one not on iHeartRadio, actually. Yeah, I don't think we're accepted. Yeah, yeah, I don't something. think we've been approved yet. Well, that's coming one day, I'm sure. Uh, but you can check us out on iOS. Or contact iHeartRadio and say, why the hell aren't they on there yet? Because everything else is. Um, of course, a big thanks to Michael Allen at Mike Allen PR helping out with the show notes and tweets all night long and maybe some more things here coming up. Please check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash awesomecast if you dig the conversation, if you want to contribute to the conversation and help us grow bigger and have bigger conversations. Uh, please drop a line uh, there. Drop a couple bucks there and, and, and hopefully, you know, help the show grow. Have, have fun with it. Um, so with that, thank you to our awesome chat room that's been uh, rolling all night. Of course, Doug Durda hopped in there. Uh, Mike, Mad Mike, uh, Wrestling with Subtitles, uh, WPAJ, Juggalo John, Bobby F, J-Town, Wheels, Brothers, Sorg, and others. Uh, you've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. We're getting awesome. We're getting awesome.